Okay, and a three, and a two, starting... Go. It's the Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast, coming to you live on Double C TV, featuring Darren... Oh god, where are you? And Double C... Wrestling gets you laid. Gotcha. As they take on five hours of WWE programming. I'm pretty sure he fudged it just while he was doing the hurricane run. Like, oh god, I don't know how to do this correctly. Yeah, we are back once again. Kind of delay, uh, belated, delayed shindig going on. We all have our reasons. I blame myself. Yes, I blame... No, wait. Wait, you gonna blame me as well? Oh, I was gonna say that, but then I said... Wait, I'm just gonna blame myself as well, then. It works. <sighs> uh, nah, I don't blame myself. I blame... Uh, I'm gonna... I'm going to blame uh, the last night's Raw. How about that? Because I felt like blaming something in that piece of shit. Yeah, last night's Raw was considerably lacking. Even though that all the big players were there and it... It should, was boring. It should work, but it just didn't. That was my problem with it. I just was bored with it. But we're getting off topic, dude. Right. We gotta actually start with SmackDown. Yes, we gotta now, go SmackDown. I gotta ask, was SmackDown as bad as, uh, Raw was? I think it was better. Okay. Oh, well, that's something new. Yeah. Uh, the SmackDown from May 3rd, uh, the first match starts out right away with, uh, Ryback, the Ryback, and Daniel Bryan. The Ryback. Yes. The Ryback. Because Daniel Bryan is copying me. It's a Northwest thing. <laughs> Somehow they have psychic uh, visions of one another. That's my guess. It's part of the Pacific Northwest culture. <laughs> like, everybody is psychic? Yes. Alright. I think there's something in, like, the onshore flow or something. Anyways. Gosh, so... Whatever. Okay, so, uh, before we begin on the match... Uh, right back gets on the mic, and he says, "It's John Cena's fault for losing the previous week against the Shield, because he should not have wrestled, even though he was hurt." I tend to agree. Once again, our bad guy is right. And then the match actually takes off. Uh, there was a pretty good, a couple good spots. There was a, a spinning power slam. Which was really weird because you know how the power slam usually goes, you know, on the shoulder and down. Uh, right back took Daniel Bryan, flipped him around on top, and then power slammed him. I don't know. It looked weird and it's there. Uh, Daniel Bryan can, uh, works on the leg and seems to be working, pulling off a nice half Boston crab. However,. Uh, Ryback does uh, pull out the victory in typical Ryback fashion. However, I think this is Ryback's best match thus far. Yeah, well, we'll see. And so I haven't seen it, so I'm taking your, so I have to take your word for it. Yeah. Next up, we go backstage with Ricardo Rodriguez. Apparently, he has a match versus Zeb Coulter. Because, like I said before. What we love to see is the managers fighting. And after that, we go um, second match of the night. Fondango versus the jobber, Zack Ryder. Or Zack Ryder. And Fondango dances around Ryder, pulling off the victory. (sighs) (laughs) I feel bad for him. Uh... After that, we go backstage with Caitlyn and her secret admirer and the uh, Kali trying to give advice, but nobody understands him. Ha ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Yeah. After that, we go backstage again with Zeb Coulter, an interview for him. He says he's going to beat Ricardo because he snuck across the borders and he's a legal immigrant, even though visas. Once again, proving 
that I think people... And I think most of our people are either idiots or don't know what they're talking about most of the time. Yeah. Then we go third match of the night. And we got Ricardo Rodriguez versus Zeb Coulter. Now, this was pretty much the uh, match of the night. Uh, let's see. No, no, second. This this ranks at number two. Because this all counts as one match. I wrote a lot of notes for this because it's important. It's important. This is serious business we're talking about here, folks. So, I make a note. This is the Zubas versus the Fishing Vest. Because all week long, Ricardo has been wearing Zubas. They are apparently back. Hey, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, dude. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jack Swagger interferes after five minutes or so and gets disqualified. Then Teddy Long comes out. Is hold on there, players. This is gonna be a tag team match. And they have a tag team match. However, uh Dolph Ziggler and Big E are also at ringside, they're doing commentary, and then they decide to get into the match and disqualification. Teddy Long comes out again and says, Hold on, players, we're gonna have a triple threat tag team match. And then they have a triple threat this tag is like team a, match. This is some this is like some Phoenix Wright shit going on here. This is what I call the uh longasm or Teddy Gasm, whatever. If he can't set someone up with the Undertaker, it has to be a tag team match. And if it can't be a tag team match, it has to be a triple threat match. And then My God. Yeah. Dolph Ziggler taps out to the arm breaker, I think. Yeah. I remember that from Raw. Yeah. Uh, after that, we go... After that cluster, we go backstage with the shield. Shield promo time. They Hooray, go. more eating of the camera. They eat the camera and say that they're gonna beat up Kane because they beat up the Undertaker. Oh, by the way, we beat up Daniel Bryan, Panda Daniel Bryan, on the floor. He got beat up. Justice, as they say. Again. Uh, next match, Randy Orton versus Damian Sandow, part one. Uh, I fast forward through this match because I did not care at all. Uh, apparently Orton wins because he's Randy Orton. However, uh, shenanigans happen. Big Show uh, shows up with a microphone. And then Sandow goes, I'm going to get you. And then gets Randy Orton. Big Show laughs. Yep. All right. I saw this and I just felt like, well, oh, that was stupid. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just didn't like it. After that, we go backstage with a Kane interview. And he goes that he's going to defend the honor of The Undertaker and Daniel Bryan, I guess. And... No matter what happens, even though that he's going to go down, he's going to take out as many S.H.I.E.L.D. members as possible. Hmm. Yep. Whatever. Next, I don't care. Next up. Uh, I call this a match, but this is Mark Henry versus Sheamus in an arm wrestling contest. Mark Henry being world's strongest man, obviously wins. However... Mm -hmm. Sheamus, being the tricky bastard he is, decides to being go left-handed. Being the cheating bastard he is. And promptly sucker punches Mark Henry. Because he's a sore loser. Yeah, this is our good guy. He's an utter jackass. He lost at the tug-of-war. He threw that match because he, he was losing, so he's going to be a sore lo loser about it. And he does this stuff. It boggles the mind. Uh, now it's time for the main event. Dean Ambrose versus Kane. Hooray. In the match where Kane dominates. However, uh, with shield shenanigans and stuff like that, Dean Ambrose uh, unveils his finisher. I call it the D. Dean T. Oh, the Dean DT. Aren't you clever? Yeah. Because it's like a DDT, but it's, it's different. Like a, 
it's a reverse DDT, but you're grabbing the head in such a unique way. Yeah. Now, I will have to say, it is a it is a cool-looking finisher. It is. It's, and it makes, it's new. And it makes sense for what it does. Yeah. However, Kane gets up eventually, and he's... He's like, I want more. He wants more. And then he eats a triple power bomb. And the shield poses with the tag titles. Meaning they're gonna go after the tag titles. Yay. That don't make any sense. Nope. And uh I think everybody knows why. Three person tag team? Yeah. This is a two-person championship, and you have a three-person tag team. Spirit Squad. Why do I? Why do you have to remind me of things I'm trying to forget? Hey, Dolph Ziggler was in the Spirit Squad. Again, why are you trying to make <laughs> me remember things I'm trying to forget? <laughs> oh. Oh, and guess what? The my DVR did decide to record. The uh, Portland Wrestling Show. So guess what? We have an indie spot. Sound effects pending. Wow. All right. Uh, they're in their invasion angle and totally get shut out in every single match with the main roster guys. Yay. That's it. One hour. Interesting. Who's booking this crap? Obviously not a good booker. Yeah. Okay, now time for Raw. Raw. Uh, do I have to? God damn it, yes I do. Yes you do. So, the show starts uh, out with Mr. John Cena. Okay, can I piss... Let's piss and moan as much as possible. Yes. It starts with John Cena. Yeah. Uh, John Cena answers questions through gimmick infringement. And this is where my feed decides to cut out, but I eventually get back to Vicky Guerrero on my TV. It pretty much does the yes, no chance. It's stupid, but also it points out one thing about John Cena. That he's not original. That, and he's not taking the points that Ryback brings up seriously. Think about that. Ryback has a serious grief with Cena. Mm -hmm. Cena's just brushing him off like he's a poser, whiny bitch. Yeah. However, John Cena's impression of Ryback is adequate. I'll give him that. You could do that impression for like a million other people. It would be the same thing. Well. Yeah, but that's like one point out of like 50. You know, it's still a failing grade. I personally, I'd make it a point five, to be quite honest. But that would be me. Okay. So Vicky Guerrero uh, teleports into the ring to discuss stipulations. No, she didn't teleport into the ring. She walked down. Okay. Could have sworn she teleported. It looked like it was teleportation, but that was just bad camera work. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not like the Big Show. He teleports all over the place. Big Show teleporting all over the place. He's like a slasher villain. Uh, so, Vicky brings out the Ryback. And, mm -hmm. oh yeah, this is where Cena makes the jokes. Ryback chooses the one match that John Cena has never lost, the Last Man Standing match. And anybody who can see is why... They he chose that, obviously. Yeah, he's hurt. Supposedly. They're working the, they're working the hurt angle. Mm -hmm. Again. Can, can Super I mean, Cena many, overcome? Whew. I mean, how many times have they done the hurt angle? Um, A lot. Remember that one time when John Cena was stabbed by Jesus? I mean, Jesus. Ugh. Nightclub. And then John Cena beat the Jesus. I'm trying to forget things, remember. <laughs> you know, alcohol can only do so much. 
Speaking of which, stay tuned after this the podcast where I get drunk and play Genesis games. Damn you and your plugging. Uh, match number one, we have Randy Orchard versus the Damian Sandow again. The Damian Sandow. Everyone, I don't know. The belongs before every single wrestler now. Whatever. Um, I'm about to fast forward through this match too. However, Sandow decides to sing a parody of Randy Orton's theme and I like it. It's about as the funniest thing that has happened this night. Mm-hmm. And to be quite fair, I was just in a bitter mood so I didn't like it either. Well, I... Yeah. Basically, he goes about how Orton is very boring and puts people to sleep. I tend to agree. I mentioned that Sandow should release an album, make lots of money, sell it on iTunes for a buck. However... I'm thinking... I'm thinking more, uh... He he does a lot of Frank Sinatra covers. (laughs) That would be fun to see. (laughs) Uh, However, Randy Orton wins because he's Orton. I don't care. Naturally. And Big Show KOs Orton off uh, the off, off camera, screen. off screen. You know, we don't get to see the KO punch. We get to see Michael Cole's reaction to it, which is just as good. <laughs> because who wants to actually see action happen when we can be told stuff happens? Uh. It's like having a juggler outside of the screen without showing him. You can already tell that this is going to be an off night. <sighs> so after that Chris Jericho comes out and he has a table and he's going to judge Fandango's dancing and he, to help him judge they, he brings out tons of funk the uh, Brodus Clay and Sweet Tea Tensai mm-hmm Okay, so we have Fandango versus our truth Nothing really to note about this other than uh, Brodus Clay giving our truth a 42 out of 10 on his dancing. Well, 42 is the answer. I know. So I do love I do love Brodus Clay for that little joke. Yeah. I give him thumbs up for that joke. Mm-hmm. Fandango is pissed about this and leaves. I wouldn't blame him. Oh, he just doesn't like Douglas Adams. <laughs> he doesn't know the importance of digital watches. I'm so glad that we taped this on Tuesdays and not Thursdays. <laughs> I could never get the hang of them. <laughs> mm. Anyways. Backstage, we go with Daniel Bryan, and he challenges the Ryback. The Ryback? Ryback says no, and turns around and finds Kane and says, I'll do it. And Ryback goes, um, okay. So that's your main event. Hooray. Hmm. I think we've seen this before somewhere. Okay. Uh, let's see. Match number three, Alberto Del Rio versus Dolph Ziggler. Why? I don't know. Because I don't care. Oh, that's right. I know why. Because they have they have a ladder match coming. Ladder match. So, uh, I put here, Alberto Del Rio misses his Enziguri kick, however, still lands on Ziggler. So he's still hit with a missed Enziguri. Macho Mania, anybody? Yay. Um, I also make note of the face first superplex, which was also kind of neat. I haven't seen those in a while. That's nice to see. Uh, then everyone interferes. I mean, everyone. And Swagger hits people with the ladder. Though I do have to agree. He does use the ladder in a versatile way. Some of these playing SmackDown, too. Smack. <laughs> Because he uses it as use it as a running thing. He uses it like the elbow, like an elbow strike, and then he just throws it at uh, one guy. Mm-hmm. I forget who he threw it at. He threw it I at think someone. About, I think he threw it at Alberto. 
Oh, that's right. Turn the page. Okay, so next we go backstage with Caitlyn and her secret admirer. You know, I just thought of something very, very disturbing. Hmm? You know, they say that it's not, uh... They say it's not, uh... Cody Rhodes that's the mirror. Right. Though, I think we think... I think most of us think that it's going to be possibly turn out that way. But I thought of another way. Uh Uh-oh. What if it turns out that, uh... Uh, that the real mirror is actually AJ. Ooh. 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 Ugh. I'm... At one point, that is hot as all hell. Shades of Mickey James. And on the other point, I am offended because that's how low we have to go. To resort to lesbianism? HLA. HLA. <laughs> There's not enough booze in this world to make me forget. <laughs> oh, and also, the Great Collie is apparently going to go undercover to find out the secret admirer. Uh-huh. Why do I expect stupid shenanigans from ha- happening now on? I don't know. New writer. Wow. It's like... Somebody really, really hates me. It's just... Or is just making things to be... Just to insult us. Uh so, after that, we have a six-man tag with The Shield versus The Usos and Kofi Kingston. Gee, I wonder how this is going to turn out. Ambrose wins with his D-Dean-T. Yay. I'm just bored with these guys now. I'm sorry. I sound like a big bitch, I know. But Jesus Christ! Oh, we got can a lot we, more. Can we move on from this? I feel like I think we've done everything we could with the shield. Next, okay. Uh, next up, we have Antonio Cesaro with a spiffy new look versus Zack Ryder. It turns out how you figure. Yeah. Cesaro rolls over Ryder. And Cesaro gets on the microphone saying he wants real competition because nobody can beat him or can compete on his level. Can compete on his level, even though he lost to Kofi Kingston Yeah, twice. Even though on that uh, rematch on main event, they did show the pretty much a shoot suplex from the ring apron to inside the ring. Because he's just that powerful. I mean, he's just so powerful. That's all. That is awesome. Next up, my favorite uh, segment of the night. This is the Paul Heyman via satellite segment. No. I pitched about this all over Twitter. I love this segment. I know you probably would. But my I'm sorry, my suspension of disbelief just broke like a freaking twig. Oh, I didn't care that you know, it was like, "Oh, he's coming in, you know, going to beat up everyone," you know. I was more interested in the tour of Titan Towers. The tour of Titan Towers. Yeah. So literally, the bo- the base of WWE is the same name as the Teen Titans. Yeah. And well, Vince owned Titan Sports. That's what the WWF used to be under. 
That's why they have the Titan Tron. <sighs> yeah. I thought it was just because it was a big screen. No. Named after the building. I... <laughs> you know, I would be happy for that. Because it is a cool reference. But it's unintentional. As all hell. Hell, I don't even think they've ever read a Teen Titans book. Mm. But... Pretty much what's going to happen is that you get a tour of Titan's Tower. They tell you what happens and they show you like all the business people. Mm -hmm. Rock almost is spooning with a guy in the elevator. Doing the Fandango theme. <laughs> I think... No, it was Paul Heyman doing the Fandango oh. theme. Still. No, Rock was too busy spooning with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude was freaking like up in his business. Mm-hmm. You might as well say that the guy was spooning. Uh, and they also uh, go to the actual place where people... Oh, yeah, covered that already. So they yeah. finally go up to the office. Yeah, they go up to the offices. They go to Triple H's office. Go to Paul's office. Mm-hmm. And then you, of course, you see it on there. That's Paul Olevsky. Yeah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. If I, if I do not, I apologize ahead of time. Or I apologize before time. Or after time. Or whatever time I said mm. that. Yeah. And they take apart Triple H's office. You know. And they take a sledgehammer to the World Heavyweight title. Which is a replica, obviously. But I make a note. Hey! We have a new hardcore title. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. If if I heard extreme as many times as I did last night, I swear to god if I had a drinking game, I'd be dead by the afternoon. I'd be alcohol poisoned the shit out of. Uh, after uh Brock Lesnar tears apart the place, Paul Hammond goes that he's not going to try to stop Lesnar anymore. He's just going to go further and further and further and... Ow. And yeah. Mm -hmm. now, until Triple H eventually walks down the ramp and says uh, that uh, the ring is his other office. Okay. Yeah. Bullshit retort. Doesn't that, matter. That's really it. Like, whatever. Dude, your office was destroyed. Well, technically, it was, wasn't was his office. It was the company's office. That's another problem I have with this segment. Brock Lesnar assaults a guy. And there's video! <laughs> to quote Spoonie on this one, CALL THE COPS! And that brings up another question. There is no security in the Titan Tower? No, there is no security in Titan Towers. Jesus Christ. You know, you'd think with, like, the big burly men that come into that business, you'd hire a guy with a taser or two. Just to put a bastard down. <laughs> I'd love to see Brock Lesnar try to no-sell a taser. Hmm. He would... He would no sell the taser unless if there's steel steps nearby. <laughs> you put him on steel steps and tase him. I think that would actually kill him, but. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those steel steps. Uh, Moving steel on. Step. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. We have a six Diva touch. AJ and Bella Twins versus the Funkadactyls and Caitlyn. Uh, AJ blows a kiss to Caitlyn. Bella's once ditch. Again. Go ahead. Once again, proving my theory that most likely the secret admirer, admirer is AJ, but also giving off in my head most of the time. Are, does she want to hurt her or does she just want to fuck her in the middle of the ring? Mm. Hard to say. 
It seems like it could be either or. Shades of Mickey James. Exactly. Uh, the balance stitch AJ high and dry, and Caitlin wins with the spear. Insert joke about AJ getting speared. And to be quite honest, I think if AJ actually did get speared in real life, she'd break like a twig. I know. Next up, Mark Henry comes out. And he has a video to show people all the work he did for two weeks. Beating up Seamus. Yeah, beating up the Seamus. But then the Seamus interrupts and he goes, Hold on there, fella. You forgot half the footage. It shows the other stuff that we've already seen 50 times before. 50 times before showing that Seamus is a sport. Is a bad sport. Yeah. And they're about to fight, but suddenly Wade Barrett appears and Seamus and Barrett have a match. Now, this is one of the better matches of the night for me. Yeah. Um, I didn't catch much of this. It wasn't that great of a match. It wasn't that great of a match. But, yeah. Uh, let's see. Seamus bro kicks Mark Henry. And then... Uh, which we're... Yeah. Which I'm pretty much... Which I was thinking, like, yeah, he probably did hurt him on that one. But then you realize what the real purpose of all that shit was. Mm-hmm. You no, know, Seamus wins his match against Wade Barrett. Burying the Intercontinental Champion and the Championship. Again. Again. And speaking about burying championships, we buried not only that, the Intercontinental, but the U.S. Championship as well. Yeah. <sighs> well, it, I'm sorry to say, but it's Kofi Kingston. What do you expect? Maybe, but you're at least you got to make sure your champions stay strong. The only way that the champions get beaten are by other champions. That's the that's the rule in my book. Mm-hmm. It makes you it makes it look like the belts are worthless. I wish Benoit was still alive. <sighs> Doesn't everybody give him the IC title and make it mean something again? I wish the cruiserweight division was alive. I mean, seriously, Benoit defended the Intercontinental title every single week on every single show. Yeah, he had, yeah, that was fun to watch him do that. <sighs> anyway. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. Uh, Mark Henry attacks the Sheamus with a belt, setting up for his match with Sheamus at Extreme Rules. I think... I loved a line that Henry said. I'll whip you like you stole something. <laughs> uh, that's how they do things in Texas. Yeah. Henry's Just from Texas, shit- right? Yeah, he's from Texas. Yeah. You know, everything's bigger in Texas. Mm-hmm. And Henry's a big motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that enough for a strap match, which I always like to see a good strap match. Though I do like the welts on Seamus' back that they show. Oh, man, could you imagine the ones at Extreme Rules? Ooh, that's going to be fun to see. I mean, they're going to... Got a two-inch thick strap. <laughs> Think of what those are going to look like afterwards, at the night bu- night afterwards. Ooh. They're going to be wrapped in red belt wounds so big and red that they're just going to make a... They're just going to pop out, and especially against Seamus's bleach white skin. That's mm-hmm. gonna look nasty. Yeah. Definitely. So, now unfortunately we've made it to the end. The main event match, Kane versus Ryback. Didn't care. I ought to, I'm True story. I actually turned off the TV at this point because I was so disgusted at the show. Yeah. You know, at that point, I was saying screw professionalism. Yeah, I fast forward through this match as well. <laughs> I didn't fast forward through this. I just said screw it and turn the damn thing off. Uh, afterward, okay, Ryback wins. Obviously, Shield come out. 
Get up, Kane. Uh, no, not actually. Uh, Kane rolls out of the ring. Daniel Bryan comes out to protect Kane. John Cena comes out to protect whoever. But it's still three against two. However, right back grabs a chair, goes after the shield, and then hits Cena. With the chair, Ryback rules. Yeah, whatever. So, oh, this was, Michael Cole was complaining throughout the entire match. It's like, oh, this is your chance, Ryback. Get the shield. This is what you wanted. And then he's suddenly surprised that Ryback decides to beat up John Cena. Uh Uh-huh voice of the wwe yeah that's pretty much 100 percent correct he is the voice of the wwe and the voice is stupid yeah and the entire series is stupid yeah and this show was stupid yeah everything last night was pitiful boring and just a chore to watch and this is coming from a guy who likes professional wrestling. Uh, hey. And I was dreading this night. It's going to get better next week. How so? There's going to be a Fandango versus Chris Jericho dance-off. Advertise for Raw. Yes. A dance-off is advertised for next week's Raw. God help me. Can we just skip all over this? Can we go ne- to the next pay-per-view? Can uh, we skip Extreme Rules, please? Like, I want to go five, five weeks, like two weeks into the future now, so we can skip over Extreme Rules. Oh, that's easy. Okay, so anyways, uh, John Cena retains. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Shield are now the tag team champions. Uh, Sheamus got hit really hard with Mark Henry. However, uh, Sheamus still pulls out the victory. Uh, Randy Orton tries to pander to the crowd and fails miserably. Uh, Big Show wins that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dolph Ziggler still champion because interference. I don't know. Because potatoes. Yes. Because, That's why. Because of potatoes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Jack Swagger ate too many potatoes, so that means he couldn't wrestle. There you go. Because you know he's from Idaho. Yeah. Yeah. And what's more American than potatoes? Even though you can cut them up and make French fries, right? Even though it's more of an Irish thing, but you know, whatever. And it's also an Irish thing as well. <laughs> and also, and also, I'm pretty sure that potatoes came from somewhere else yeah. besides Ireland. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of shenanigans happen and. CM Punk is still gone. (laughs) He's busy watching uh, Chicago Bears games. Yeah, yeah, he. he, Which I don't envy him. Actually, I envy him. I mean, he's watching baseball games with Lita. I envy him a lot. (laughs) Sometimes I wonder why do. Sometimes I wonder. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder too. Uh, I also wonder what's going to happen later tonight when I get drunk and play video games. Dude, that was a lame segue. Hey, I got a good vodka. It's a, uh, it's a port. It's not a Portland based, but it is a Oregon uh, micro distillery. You it's know. still Northwestern crap. Hey, it smells really good. It's probably made of potatoes as well. Uh, I believe it's a grain alcohol. Yeah, I wouldn't believe it. (laughs) Anyways, uh, enough for the booze hour. Because that's not that show. This show is... Go ahead. This is the Sunset Flip. Yes, this is the Sunset Flip. We talk about serious business here. And I interrupt Casey all the time. Yeah, with wrestling. Wrestling. (laughs) Yes. So... We're going to see you next week, huh? We'll see you maybe, next time. Maybe it will get better. Maybe it will get better on the Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast. 
I doubt it. 